Hey data fans, Reed here. Today we have an exciting new update for the visualizations in Power BI. Now with the February 2024 release, we have an option, as you can see in front of us here, to do bar overlaps, where instead of having the clustered column or bar charts stacked next to each other, we can actually add a degree of overlap and control how much they overlap with each other between two different measures. Now, on top of this, we can also even incorporate those error bars into some variance bars as well to really show two different comparative values against the base value that we have. So we're gonna explore all of these in turn. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So for this demonstration, I'm gonna show you a few different methods for incorporating the overlaps, but also how to actually turn the error bar into another variance comparison. The first one that we see in front of us here is a final product. That is actually showing sales amount here on the top as the blue column. The column in the back, the gray one, is the prior year, and then it's comparing to the forecast. So these bars show if the forecast is above or below the initial value. Now, I wanna build this out one by one, but this is what the end result will look like. So I'm gonna come over to the demo start for variance line, and let's walk through how to build this. So. I have the visual here as it would come out of the box today before we turn on any of these features, which right now is essentially just showing you a clustered column chart of sales and prior year. Now, to start this, we're gonna come into columns, and if you go into the section for layout down here, there's a new option called overlap that I wanna turn on down here at the bottom. And then space between series. So as we increase this, so let's go ahead and make this maybe like 85% the bars will start to overlap each other. And that's a little bit too close, so I might even drop this down to maybe about 75. There we go. Now, as they start to overlap, generally speaking, my personal design preference is to call out the primary value. So that means that that's the only one with the data label that I want to have turned on. So I'm gonna to come to series and I'm going to go to prior year. And one thing I wanna do is de-emphasize the color just a bit. So I'm gonna turn this to a lighter gray that helps to separate it and move it into the background a little bit, but still make it visible. And then we also wanna to go to data labels and go to prior year, show for series, turn that one off. Now the only label that will be showing is gonna be specifically for the sales that's in the front. Now, last but not least with this, we can also now actually leverage the error bars if we want to, to be able to show a comparison. So in this case, we're gonna come down and notice that we have an option for sales or prior year, and I want to apply the settings to the sales by field, and I'm gonna come over to this. I'm gonna go over to any of the calculations that we have over here, and I think I'm gonna grab budget for this one, and I'm gonna stick that in my upper bound, and I wanna make sure to turn the bar on down here at the bottom. We have to turn it on under options, and we need to turn it on under bar. And what that will do, if I only provide it one of these two upper or lower bounds, it will simply give me the variance to that. So the error bars essentially can be turned into a variance bar. This indicates right here, if I hover over that, that just shows me what the forecast is and what the sales is. Now, unfortunately today, I can't relabel this, so it has to be called upper. We will find some ways to account for this and provide some context, but as of today, at least February 2024 release, no way to rename that. We can, however, though, under options for the error bars, come to the tooltip, and instead of showing the initial value, if we wanted to, we can show relative percentage. So if I hover over this, this actually shows me that my sales is 37% below whatever my forecast is. So it just shows whether or not it's higher or lower, and this means that my sales is 48% above it because my forecast is minus 48% of the value of the sales. So it can still be used as a reference amount. Now, what I ended up doing to create a tooltip for this is I used another visual um, essentially to, to build this out. So in this case, I went ahead and added a tree map, something like this. And I just added my sales, my, I think I wanted to go to prior year sales. So PY, put that into there and then my budget. So budget also goes into there. Nothing else other than these three values. And what I'm gonna do with this actually, is I'm gonna move it up here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the legend. There we go. And I essentially shrunk this all the way down, got rid of the title, category labels. I'm gonna make sure that my header icons are turned off, my tooltips are turned off and put a background on. There we go and make sure that's 100%. Um, other way around, 100% here. 
or zero percent to make the background filled in and i'm going to shrink this and then this what we can actually do is we just want to make sure that the colors are aligned so we're going to come to this here go to legend and color is down here sales becomes blue prior year sales becomes this gray and then budget is that and then we can stack it right about there and then if you wanted to you could also group the objects together to make them uh, a bit more concise group them and then we get the achieved effect that we would want to with these three but I really like this visual to have two comparative values where you have your primary, a secondary comparison, and then even a third, and then the legend itself speaks to what the colors represent. But I love the offsets. Uh, again, a big shout out to the Power BI Core Visuals team with Miguel Myers, who's helming all of that. Uh, continually happy to be a participant and being able to help evolve the products, but we get so many cool releases like this that come out that let us enhance our native visuals. Now, I don't want to just stop here. I have a couple of other variances of this. As soon as I saw that, my first thought was, I would love to have these error bars or the variance lines. I want to move them or offset them to either the left or the right as an alignment on this. I don't want them necessarily in the dead center. So I once again found a way to do this. This one's a little bit more of a, a tweak to the system. I don't want to use the word hack, but it is something that uh, requires a few more considerations, but I, I got an achieved effect from it. So. Here's a variance bar. Uh, if I come back over to the line offset here and one more over, actually, let's go to this tab. So for the column chart, I was able to basically move that bar over. Now, there's a few hidden techniques to achieve this, but it has the added effect that we need to. If I hover over, we still get the upper and lowers. We can get the values um, for that. So it is working um, as far as what we uh, need to accomplish onto this. But the I'll walk you through essentially the, the technique that that's able to achieve this. So we're going to come over to the demo start for variance bar. And actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the demo start for variance line and I'm just gonna enhance this one to move it over. So the trick actually comes down to adding a third value in the Y axis well. So I have a placeholder for error bar. This is just simply referencing my sales amount. So Watch what happens and kind of see how I'm able to trick the visual uh, to moving the error line over. So to start with, I'm going to come to error bars for this visual and I'm going to turn it off here for sales. So my error bar is off for sales now. Now I'm going to come to take this placeholder, which is the same amount of sales. I'm going to drop it onto there. Notice that we have a third bar showing up. So we need to do a couple things first. So I'm going to come to data labels. I want this third calculation, my error bar placeholder. I'm going to turn it off for that. And I'm also just going to change the name of this value to just a period. I just want it to have a short name to be in the legend, but it has been moved, recolored, and the labels have been turned off. And now I'm going to go to columns, I'm going to go to this one, and I'm going to turn the transparency to 100%. So the bar is now invisible. But because I have a third bar that it's also offset based off those overlaps, I can add an error bar to the middle of that and scoot it over compared to all the other ones, so it will look like I actually have it aligned. So you'll see this in action. We're gonna to come to error bars. I'm gonna to go to that third placeholder that I have, turn it on, and I'm going to add in here the budget again in the upper bound. You can already see it's a little bit offset. So let's do a couple of tweaks first. So the, the bar here, we're gonna make this red. I'm gonna make the width a little bit more. I'm gonna change the marker to maybe like a square. I don't really like the border, so I'll turn that off. So we have the error bar, it's, it's moved over to the side, but now here's what we can do. One, I want to turn it to relative percentage because I would like to see that percent if I hover over that. But let's go ahead, close out our error bars here. And we're going to come over to columns, collapse this, and for the all series layout, let's go ahead and change the space between series. So notice as I reduce this, it starts to move that to the right. So I'm going to say like 50. Let's see how that does. Not quite there, so we're gonna keep going. I'm gonna say like maybe 25. So it's almost there. And now what I can also do is space between categories. Let's drop this to zero. Okay, we're getting really close. And now let me tweak the space between series a bit and maybe add like two or three more percentages. One more, nope, oh, one less. Okay, I'd say that's close enough, but we've now on that invisible bar attached an error bar, which is in the center of that but the overlap offset now makes it look like it's right aligned to the original column. So it is the achieved effect. 
A couple of nuanced notes with this is if I hover over on the left, I'm not going to get the error bar amount. I do have to hover over the actual invisible bar to get it. So again, it's not completely perfect, but it is close to what I would like to achieve to have that extra variance bar between the background one for the prior year, the sales, and then that additional one that's on the top. And in this case, we want to make sure to also come down and edit this to match the colors. So I'm going to go now and change budget to red. There we are. But I do like this effect. It's getting really close to some of the types of things that I will see with IBCS type integrated variance bars and a few others. But there's some degrees of freedom that you could have to customize to configure this stuff, which I think is really cool. And I had a lot of fun figuring out how I could upgrade and modify these. Um, I even turned this as well. If I come actually to my variance line um, integrated over here, integrated variance, that one. Yeah, so this one has a similar process to the other one that I just showed you, but instead for the error bars, what I did is I simply for the bar made it a width of 10, got rid of the marker, and now the bar is thick enough to be almost an integrated variance itself, which is a type of bullet chart that I really like as well. The sad part about this is I have no way that I've found to actually color code it to be positive or negative. I've tried multiple error bars and a few other techniques. As of February this year, I do not believe it's possible to make them red or green, depending on if it's a positive or negative variance, but it's one other way to graphically represent this. So hopefully this is giving you a few examples of how to leverage this stuff where you have the, I'd say straight up out of the box solution to start with, which is center aligned, only using three measures for everything, truly out of the box in terms of how they're kind of intended to be used. And then there are some fun options as well to start modifying it a little bit and kind of uh, upgrading the native visuals with a little bit of a layered technique and an invisible bar to add the offset for now, and hopefully they add this in the future, but one other option for you to incorporate with that. Um, but otherwise, I do hope this is something that you can incorporate into yours. I would love to hear if you have any suggestions on enhancements or improvements or how you might leverage these in the reports that you have. As always, drop that in the comment section down below. Check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to help my channel continue to grow. And otherwise, I'll see you all in my next video.